Hello there, my name is Andy Dogan. I'm a violist in the DuPage Symphony Orchestra, and I'm excited to introduce you to one of my favorite pieces of music, a London symphony, the symphony number no. two of the English composer Ray Vaughan Williams. Vaughan Williams lived from 1872 to 1958 and is perhaps best known for music that incorporates elements of English folk song. He also spent time in Paris in the winter of 1907-1908 studying with Maurice Ravel in both his affection for a musical style incorporating elements of English folk song and the lighter impressionistic textures of Ravel's music are really evident in his London Symphony. The London Symphony was first performed in 1914, literally just a couple of months before the outbreak of World War I. In context of all that was happening in the world, Vaughan Williams created a symphony that all at once conveyed the spirit and energy of the city of London, the influence of Ravel and other French Impressionist composer before him, in foreboding of the grave global conflict that broke out later in 1914. The symphony is in four movements, and the first movement opens quite literally with a musical scene of London waking up, with delicate string and wind textures suggesting fog and sunrise. As the music builds towards daybreak, we hear very softly in the harp and clarinet the Westminster chimes. And then the day begins. The first movement is full of character, conveying the hustle and bustle of the city, interrupted by a short interlude for harps and strings before the lively energetic music of the city brings the movement to a close. The second movement was described by Vaughan Williams as intended to evoke Bloomsbury Square on a November afternoon. It begins slowly, triple piano, and gives the English horn, flute, trumpet, and of course the viola, some quiet and, for, quiet and peaceful solo moments, first in the middle of the piece, and again to close the movement. The third movement is a scherzo subtitled Nocturne, or music inspired by the night, and here we see the influence of Ravel and Claude Debussy, whose three nocturnes of about 15 years prior might have influenced this movement. Vaughan Williams himself described this movement as if the listener will imagine himself standing on Westminster Embankment at night, surrounded by the distant sounds of the Strand, with its great hotels on one side and the new cut on the other, with its crowded streets and flaring lights. It may serve as a mood in which to listen to this movement. As with Debussy's festivals in his three nocturnes, the lively music here builds to a climax with all of the themes of the music just piled up on top of one another, then fading away to a hushed conclusion.
We then reach the final movement, which begins with an almost anguished cry from the full orchestra before moving into a slow and solemn march. The boisterous sounds of the city, busy city eventually return, and the march theme returns in several variations, building and broadening to an overwhelming climax punctuated by a stroke of the tam-tam. Eventually, the boisterous city music of the first movement briefly returns before the quiet final epilogue, which the composer describes by quoting H.G. Wells. Light after light goes down, England and the kingdom, Britain and the empire, the old prides and the old devotions, glide a beam, astern, sink down upon the horizon, pass, pass. The river passes, London passes, England passes. The symphony ends as it begins, with strings playing as soft as possible, triple piano. The London Symphony is remarkable not only for its breadth of wonderful melodies and energy that are so characteristic of London, but also for its underlying foreboding of the great global conflict that would begin less than five months after the symphony's first performance. Compared to other music of the early 20th century, the symphony is not as often performed or as well known as works of Stravinsky, Rachmaninoff, or even von Williams' contemporary Gustav Holst that were written around the same time. But it's a unique and distinctive piece, a masterpiece in my opinion, that deserves to be heard more often. And all of us in the DuPage Symphony look forward to performing it live for you as soon as we can. We encourage you to visit the orchestra's website at dupagesymphony.org to learn more about the orchestra and how we're continuing to engage the community during this unprecedented time. Hope you enjoyed the introduction to this wonderful symphony, and we thank you for watching.